and here we go again. I'd like to take a look if I may to a program I've used for a long long time and uh, feel quite comfortable using it as well. It's called PaintShop Pro 6. Now I've used this program ever since I was in I th possibly Windows 98. may have come across it in um, Windows XP but it's a long time ago I've been since I've been using it. Uh, one of the problems I've always had with it is that to, to get it to work in Windows 7, Windows 8, 8.1 and in Windows 10 I had to go into safe mode to install it but I came across a copy of this um, PaintShop Pro 6 on a website where I could just install it straight away in Windows 10 and apart from a few little glitches here and there it does work well so let's have a look at that we'll have a look where we get it from and this website I found it on is a website called oldversion.com and it carries a lot of old versions from PaintShop Pro X4 through all the oh it's X399 8.1 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 and uh, even you know before it was taken over by Corel Corel Draw is uh, the one that most people associate with it. Right, so this is uh, this is the site. It, again, I'll repeat it. It's oldversion.com. They don't just do old versions of PaintShop Pro. They do old versions of other programs as well. So it could well be worth taking a look around here. Have a look, see if there's something else that you might like. And something else that you might feel more comfortable with. It's up to you. Anyway, here we are. To download it, we just click the download button wait for a moment to make sure you've got the Windows, the Mac, the Linux, the games, the Android, whichever operating system you're using you need to select it on the side panel there. So here we go PaintShop Pro 6.02 or 6.02 as it comes up and it takes but a short time to uh, download it. So have a look in my downloads folder and look there it is PaintShop Pro 6.02 we'll double click on that to install it there's a little message which I'm not sure you'll see but a message off Microsoft saying do you wish to install it that's because I'm in administrator mode and I get that quite a lot anyway we'll accept the terms and conditions next it will ask us what we need in it we've got picture frames we've got textures tube brushes which I'll go into detail uh, on another occasion because they're quite quite good tube brushes uh, we have application of PaintShop Pro and an animation shop. If you don't want something like animation shop for example tick the box and away it goes you won't install it. Why take up space if you're not going to? But I do use animation shop and I use it um, quite a lot as well. So we'll say yes to everything click next and next again and hey look at that. No sooner said than done. We'll skip the privacy statement we don't need to click OK to finish installing. Do we want to read me? Well you can if you want. You just click yes whereas I click no and that's all good to go now. Uh, I'm not sure if my old link will work actually. Yes it does. That's a surprise. Um, so we can click start. The first th thing we come up against is file format associations. If you're using Photoshop or something similar to that and you're really conversant with that program you might want to edit this thing but uh, what I tend to do is I select all anyway because I use this as default. Uh, next will come up a tip of the day. There is quite a lot of tips in there. If you want to see them you can either flick through them, next tip, next tip, next tip. I think over the 12 or so years that I've been using this program I think I've seen all the tips now so I won't bother seeing any more. Now when we start off we end up with these two windows, the layer palette window which we don't need straight away, tool options we don't need that straight away either but we will bring those back up in due course. So what have we got? Let's go to preferences, general program preferences. This is obviously an old program so when it says uh, enable the undo system it says limit or limit undo or redo disk usage to 20 megabytes that will not go very far today so what I do is whip that right up to nearly a gigabyte uh, because we probably use that much when we open up some big pictures and we can limit it to three undos or step it up whatever you want to do uh, however much space it takes I find 999 is great um, some people that have used this say right well, we'll whip that up to I don't know 15 or 20 undos but occasionally and rarely but occasionally 
you can come unstuck where you get to almost the end of where you started editing and find you can't go back that next step which is the one you really wanted to go back to however that's um that's by the by 999 that should be great to start with right the other preferences there i'll just uh to close the box a bit prematurely um general program preferences just go through these menus yourself miscellaneous um check all just read all the different things and if you feel it's going to be pertinent tick the box so as you can see it rulers they come in pixels or you can have it set to inches i'll set it to inches or if you're, you're really into the centimeters you can set it as we'll set it as centimeters just to be a bit different there we go uh, toolbar colors black and white or toolbar colors whatever default resolution is 62 pixels or sorry 72 pixels per inch which is a general standard across the whole of the um, graphics board i think so that's okay dialogue and palettes have a look at those there you might find something of interest in there uh, import filters browser whichever browser you want and transparency i quite like this as a transparency color um, which we'll see if we do editing gifs a bit later on so there we are that's all the preferences we need to worry about let's have a quick look at the menus obviously you can see as you come into the program straight away there's two parts of the well, or even three parts there's the file menu at the top here uh, the shorter menus there's the uh, various bits and pieces on here which I'll go through very quickly on them over the other side of the screen on the right hand side of the screen there's the color pr production and what have you if I wanted to change the color of the background to white uh, rather than uh, black it's a click of this button here and if I wanted to change the color of the ink that would be that one if I wanted a nice red ink I can choose from the selection there or I can move it around to be just exactly what I want and you can play around this quite quite freely if you want purples and blues they're all there so you know 60 odd million colors so we'll, we'll settle for we'll settle for a blue eh? I think something like that okay that'll be good there we are so that will be the colours. We'll do more on colours again as we go through doing drawings and designs and that sort of thing a bit later on maybe in the series. Let's see, the, have a look at the menus. It's a file menu. That's fairly straightforward. Um, tell you what I'm going to do just to short circuit a little bit here. If I open up a picture, which I think I took one from World of Warcraft recently, we can use one or more of those. Ah, I just open it oh dear right so the links missing that's because I installed it ready for the reinstallation so uh, that's the only reason that's doing it uh, open with whoops screenshot pro there we go and it opens straight away so this is a character from world of warcraft that uh, I've played Emrin is the young lady's name and uh, what can we do with this picture well the first don't worry about the picture as much as what the menus say as you can see when we've loaded the picture is there's a lot more information available to us um, a lot of it's standard but let's go through them open pretty much what we've just done opened we can start new um, starting a new is fairly interesting as well because we can define the width of the new picture and the height of the new picture so if we want something similar to the shape we've got now we could put the width as uh, say 800 even and do the height as 600 okay there we go there's an 800 by 600 we could actually just manipulate that a bit make it longer what size is that one that's uh, one 120 by 1080 there we could follow that same ratio of size but we won't do we'll just stick with the picture we've got for now so there we are that's new um, oh, just another thing on the new. Um, when we pick it, it will always p come in the background colour that we have selected here. So if we just for some reason collect selected a green colour, uh, when we come to new, it will give us a green picture. So that's worth remembering anyway. Let's come carry on down the list then. Save and save as pretty common. Save copy as, and delete, send in an email to, import. Now you can import from a scanner. I think we've got to select the source first. Yeah, well I've got brother. Um, I've got a brother. Th 
315W. So we can import Twain and Acquire and it brings up our dialog box for the uh, scanner. OK, we'll cancel that. So this is all built in. Next thing we look at is export. We can export as a picture tube, which we, again I've mentioned tubes before and we will come back to them, maybe not in this demonstration but a bit later on in the series. We can do a transparent GIF. If you're making icons or if you're making images or whatever, you can do as a, gra a transparent GIF and then convert it from there. It can be just standard JPEG file. Or Studio Venture, uh, uh, Studio Avenue dot com. I'm not sure what that is. I've never used it in all the time it's been there. Right, we can page setup. We can print preview, print, and print multiple images. That's a handy one to know about. Print multiple images. If I click on it, we get a brand new window, and it also means we can click on there. We get a default message saying the image will not fit in the paper without scaling. Do you want to scale it? Now, if I say no that completely obliterates the page. Um, so the answer to that should have been a simple yes. And I would have had well, that sort of dimension. Let me just get rid of that and do it again. We get the same error, scale it, and that's all it does. It makes it fit your paper, basically. Um, we, can, we can scale it further. We can drop it down. And we can make it really small. There we go. And that's the way of print. What you see is what you get. And we can do that several times over if we wish. You know? And pop it down there. And we can make the size very, very similar throughout. It's a bit bigger, isn't it? There we go. That'll do. And we can carry on like that all day. Very much puts in mind of school photographs where you have the, the students photographing one part. You Generally an A5. Let me just get rid of these two. I'm double clicking on those to get rid of them. So you'd end up with an A5 size picture. That's just a bit too big, I think. And you can rotate it if you wish. Um, yeah, 90 degrees minus. You take it right the way around. Do what you want. And you can scale it. And you can do that with all copies as well that we might have. Whoops. There we go. So we can do that with all copies and individually scale it. I click on that one. That's the live picture. So we can turn it positive, turn it negative, whatever. We can enlarge it. We can decrease the size of it. It's quite a versatile little image viewer that's in there. And the, the fact that you can do the uh, miniature pictures is uh, a bonus, I think. Anyway, enough of that. Um, close. No, we don't want to keep that. So we'll open our picture again. There it is. That's great. Um, let's carry on down here. We've done the export right, and we can. Again, this will be in a later video. We can do batch conversion. So if you have a whole load of pictures you want to change from one type of picture, if you've got them all as GIFs or uh, whatever, it can be any one of these files here, from PCX to PNG bitmaps quite a good load of different files Amiga files T, uh, TFF uh, GIF as I said before and we have uh, Postscript e EPS IMGs images and JPEGs obviously so there's a good selection there to choose from if we wanted to change from JPEG as it is to PNG we'll say we put the title of the picture in there or pictures or the folder we want to do and then tell it that's what we want and tell it to where to put it output so it'll be C um, do pickies just simple as and that will make a little folder on our C drive called pickies where it'll have all the converted stuff in there again that is something we need to go into more far more detail than I've got a chance to do today so uh, there we go that's just one menu we've been down um, Animation Shop is a completely different program. I'll just run that very quickly. Look, um, let me start that as well. And this is—it's uh, got built-in wizards and all the rest of it, which we will go into, but not today. But it is there as an Animation Shop. That is something which a lot of people get impressed with. How easy it is to use. Uh, anything else here? Preferences. This is where we started off, I think, by putting the bits and pieces in. Um, in the toolbar and what have you. 
okay so let's have a look at the edit menu very quickly usual cop copy paste etc so if I um, if I highlight an area we'll say we'll, we'll do a picture there maybe not as big as that if I do a picture head and shoulders there we are and I want to do um, something with that if I want to copy that press ctrl and C to copy it then if I want to paste it I can t paste it as a new image a new layer a new selection a transparent selection and into whichever selection I've put there so if I copied that as a transparent selection it would make that color the default background color so any of any with that color in it would not be copied you just put the uh, image down but I'm not going to do that just now again that's quite detailed how to do that and we'll do that another time so there's plenty of plenty of variation there in the pasting um, uh, pasting sub menus and clear which we can do we can clear that area nice thing about the other uh, bar menu here is that we can also go back a step or go forward a step just by clicking those two we can also cut it out as well um, we can do various scales um, which we'll come to again on another uh, another demonstration so there's our fairly fairly convincing list there we can view we can zo view by one by five zoom out by one and five we can get image information we can have grids on like that uh, I'm not quite sure how big the grid is um, or we can have toolbars visible etc and so forth so there's quite a lot of functionality in the view menu image we can flip it we can mirror it we can rotate it we can add borders we can crop selections we can change the canvas size and we can resize the image itself we can do deformations which are very popular we can put effects on hours of fun playing with those if you, if you want to deform I don't know how we do this I'm probably on the wrong tool actually go back to deformations and what can we do here there we go look see that's what we can do just as a click a button so just a, there's a before and we put on a deformation and whew, that's a bit vicious okay let's go back and do that again uh, warp so we won't warp it quite horizontally we can go a few points in we can also make this auto proof the settings look there we are that made her just a bit bigger in the chest department look that's uh, just a bit bigger <laughs> Yeah, we can play around. That's what it's about. So that's a uh, view menu and the image menu. Play with those, go around. It's great fun. Colors, we can adjust the colors. We can make the brightness and gamma and highlight and the hue, the hue map. We can see a hue map. Oh, let me just go back. There's a hue map. We can see which colors are percentage of which particular base color. And again, you can play around with that. The red's fairly predominant there. I'll just turn that down to a blue. There we go. And it changes her sleeves on her jumper there quite dramatically. There we are. The red shirt she's got on. If you can change that. Um, if you click autumn proof, it is autumn proof. Uh, anything with yellow in it, I can, uh, or orange even, I should say. We can change that to be a blue or even a pink if we want. There we go takes a bit it does look a bit silly so you've got to be careful with these however you can always click reset and it'll put everything back the way it was which is a handy little function and because they built that into it they people expected to make mistakes that's the way it is so that's the colors we've got quite a little different things we can do a negative image quite in simply take that back we can do a grayscale if that's what we want the whole picture goes grayscale I'll just take it back after each of these operations because it will get confusing otherwise um, we can do channel splitting RGB so we can end up if I click RGB what will happen is that we'll uh, see all the various components to make up an RGB picture so if I go to color and do RGB channel split there we are we have three separate pictures now each one that's the uh, the green or the coloured green sections this will be the red sections and the one at the bottom here will be the blue sections 
so we can fill all that lot in you can see minute, minute details changes in each of the pictures but we won't uh, we won't save them we'll just close them I think nope nope and finally no, nope. there we go so layers layers we'll come into we can do different layers and showing how to create different layers in the pictures selections select all matting modifying loading from an alpha channel etc we can do all that sort of stuff a bit later on gets a little bit complicated now as we move up this end of the scale uh, we can set up captures and start capturing from a, a video or whatever and of course the window new window uh, cascade windows tile horizontally vertically close all duplicate at all fit to image etc so there is lots and lots and lots to play with anyway that's just a very brief brief overview of the program um, I say it's a small program it's quite a large program actually um, and it is out of date and it's old but it's good as well and I thoroughly enjoy using it so I hope you're the same I hope you'll download it and play around with the various images that we'll have and uh, and see if we can make the program work for us as it works for you as well as it works for me you'll, you'll never look back so I'm going to close that I'm going to go back on the internet and just show you again this is where we get PaintShop Pro version 6.02 it's an old version it's out of date you can't actually buy it from the manufacturers anymore but you can download it free of charge it comes as a bit of a trial but I don't think it's time limited we'll see I'm not sure if you want to buy the latest version of PaintShop Pro you do need to go to the site I was at in the beginning the Corel, the Corel site or Corel, some people pronounce it Corel. Uh, this is Paint Shop Pro 2018 Ultimate. Now this will cost you £70 all but a penny. If you think that's a bit rich for a painting package, what you could do is... There we are. There's a special offers page. There we are. This is, uh, that's the one we just looked at, the Ultimate. There's also the Paint Shop Pro 2018. That's only, that's only £42 actually and £42 for something as powerful as Photoshop um, how much is Photoshop these days I have no idea but I think it runs into hundreds of pounds um, you can if you wish buy Coral Draws graphic suite which encompasses probably everything you ever need to know and do in photography and the full version is almost £600 so you can see for what you're getting this snapshot image of what I've just showed you now uh, for £42 if you need to buy the 2018 version that's up to date as you can get so there we are that sort of concludes my uh, demonstration I'll put these addresses uh, on the pages at the end of the video so if you want to make a note of them you can do it there uh, I will learn one of these days how to put a link within my videos until then I'm afraid we'll have to do it the hard way thank you very much for watching and thank you for uh, supporting me I'll just say thank you to everybody who's uh, put their comments and uh, subscribe to my channel and I hope you'll do the same it's Howard L Hall at YouTube and if you can get there click on the, the follow button and I shall be exceedingly happy so thank you and goodbye for now